Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's video, we're going to be making a crawl space access cover. I'll insert a picture right here to give you a better idea of what it is we're going to be doing and a good look at the area. And it's going to be an all metal cover and frame. So let's get started on today's video. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so I'm starting out with just some simple layout on my welding table right here. I've been doing that a lot lately. It uh, works well with the markers. If you've got a small enough project, you can just uh, lay your job out on the table. We're starting off with some one inch square tube. This is 063 wall thickness, uh, pretty thin material. Originally when I started this, I, I figured that oh, I just need to have some lightweight material, uh, something that's just gonna be a cover that's just gonna fit over the top of the opening right here. But you know, as I'm building things, it just gets more and more heavy duty and out of control. And I just like building things super strong. In this case, this is kind of what happened with this project right here. All right, so I was able to make some of the cuts, but some of the cuts I just couldn't get done on the cutoff saw. So I'm over at my uh, port band right here. This is a long, narrow cut, and I had to have these uh, two of them. I had a little bit of trouble with this one. After, once I got going, it was okay, and that, that's how I made those cuts. All right, so the assembly right here, you can see that, uh, like I said, I've got it laid out. So I'm gonna clamp everything down. I got these extra long clamps. I was able to fit over the top because my regular clamps wouldn't uh, reach quite over the top right there. And once I got everything in place, then I went ahead and just uh, started tacking everything in. Now you might wanna see that one tube is a little short at the top and that's short for a reason. I'm gonna put a uh, one inch square by eighth inch thick flat plate on the very end of that a little bit later on. Now I cut, I probably could have made that cut um, on an angle and uh, hindsight, I probably should have tried to do that, but uh, I wasn't thinking at that time, so. All right, here it is, uh, kind of roughly assembling this. Again, marking on my table, getting the dimensions that I need to have. Now the idea with this is that the actual cover is going to have sides to it that are going to uh, extend down on the pour in place uh, concrete stem wall that's there now and that's what's going to kind of hold it in place you're going to extend down about an inch and a quarter and the customer did not want any handles on this he wanted something nice and smooth and so the plate uh, the sheet metal that's going on the top is actually going to extend past this about an inch and a quarter on both sides and he's going to utilize that as a lip to be able to um, you know remove the cover if he needs to he just wanted a nice clean look so here I am I'm starting to assemble everything here and this is where you know things start to get crazy for me I thought well I guess I better have a support across the very top right here that's going to help support that well that I got to have one at the bottom too. That's what's going to have to keep it held in place. Well, while I'm at it, I may as well put one in the middle for some added support. You know, you just never know. Someone might stand on this thing by accident. And if that's the case, it'd probably just cave right in. So I just keep adding and adding and adding. <laughs> yeah, and another support on the top as well. Uh, this is uh, this is part of my deal. I just I just keep thinking I got to be more and more heavy duty, more and more stronger, you know, more is better, big is better, you know, but that's not always the case. All right, then I got a piece of uh, flat bar. This is going on the very bottom right here. This is again, going to be sitting on that concrete stem wall. And then the front part of this uh, sheet metal is going to protrude over the front edge of that as well, about an inch and a quarter all the way around. That's what's going to kind of lock this, this whole thing into place. I'm just getting uh, the dimensions right where it needs to be. And then I decided, up. Oh, I better add some support in the middle here. If someone goes to stand on this, you know, this, just those supports across here, it's pretty wide, wasn't gonna be enough. So I thought, okay, I'll just put these supports in here. And again, remember this outside edge is gonna be sitting on top 
of a concrete stem wall. So by adding this, now if someone stands on this thing, uh, the size of me, about 250 pounds, it shouldn't be a problem at all. But uh, you just never know. You know, welding these supports in like this, you can see it's going in no problem except for the very last one, which is coming up right here. Um, for some reason, I don't know, maybe my cut wasn't just right and it stuck out just a little bit. So I needed to get a clamp. And of course, I grabbed a 12 inch clamp. Yep, too short. Another, which I thought was bigger than a 12, but it was 12. And of course that spacing is 12 and a quarter. Well, here's a 24 inch clamp finally. But it was just enough to pull it in and I was able to get this uh, tacked in place as well. And here I am starting to weld out some of this stuff right here. And I gotta tell you, um, there are over a hundred welds on this thing. It doesn't look like it, but uh, there are. And it's gonna be a process to get everything welded out. And here's that piece of uh, flat plate that I was talking about. Um, that I'm adding on right here at the very end. I probably should have had that angle figured out and made that cut, but that's okay. This is gonna work just fine. You're not gonna see this by the time, um, you know, that gets ground down, that's gonna be up against the house and uh, the plate's gonna be over the top of it anyway, so it won't be seen. So like I said, over hundred wells, and just when you think you've got them all, there's always some that you don't get. And uh, this happened to me so many times on so many different projects when you've got a lot of welds like this, you just think you have everything and you can look over that whole project, and say, yep, I got them all, and then there will be one that you didn't get. And then you'll get that one, you'll look over everything again, and there'll be another one that you didn't get. It just never fails. That's what happened here on this one. This one I thought when I had everything, there was always a couple more that I had to get. Doesn't seem like it, but like I said, over 100 welds in a small little project. All right, with all the welding done, it's just a flap disc to kind of clean up some of those welds that are gonna be sticking out where the sheet metal is gonna be going. I want everything to sit nice and, nice and flat and nice and flush on the square tube right here. So I'm just cutting down those welds that are gonna be in the way for that. All right, so here's the sheet metal we're gonna be using. Now, an interesting little note right here you can see how rusted this piece of metal is and i had this on the side of my side of my garage and it hadn't been out there for very long it's only been out there for a month or so and typically it would never rust like that but what i had was a bucket with some muriatic acid in it with some small pieces of metal in there trying i was trying to remove the mill scale and this bucket was this this piece of sheet metal was literally 10 feet away from the bucket and just the flash rust from the muriatic acid fumes was enough to do that much damage to this piece of uh, sheet metal. It's just uh, amazing how strong that uh, muriatic acid is. All right, so I'm just cutting off the pieces that I need here, which is going to be one piece for the very top and then a couple of side pieces that are going to be on an angle. I'm just trimming everything up here, getting the pieces that I need. And with the big piece uh, out of the way there, here's the small little angle piece. You know, this is, this little Evolution metal cutting saw right here has really been a good asset here, accompanied with that Champion uh, blade on there. It works really well. And then just cutting things off and finishing it up. Over to port band all right, check this little grinder out. Now I have a lot of grinders and this has done something new that I just saw and I just purchased. This was $65 at my local metal supply store. It's a Fournay and it is adjustable speed, which is rare. You don't really see adjustable speed grinders that cheap for sure. So I saw this, I picked it up and this was a perfect use for that right there. I've got a scotch bright wheel on the very end here and it just was enough to remove the rust. Now I do have a fan set up. I know everyone's gonna say, where's your respirator? You're removing all that rust. I have a fan just right out of the picture right there that's blowing this right out the door. Just for you people that are wondering. But this worked out really good. I turned it down to a lower speed, a lower revolution. Um, and with that uh, Scotch-Brite wheel on there, it just removed that rust really nice. I'm really happy with the results. Didn't take very long at all to do that. Nice little grinder for 65 bucks. All right, there's the fan. All right, so the assembly right here, and I'm just 
clamp and everything in place be sure everything is lined up where i want to and you can see the overhang off the bottom right there that is uh that's what i'm talking about it's about an inch and a quarter and that's going to happen on both sides and it's a tight fit it's going to fit nice and tight over the top of that stem wall well, you can see that this thing is starting to add pounds. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be a lot heavier than what I, I was hoping it was going to be. But uh, nevertheless, it's, it, it's not going to be removed very often. And, uh, you know, it's going to be plenty strong enough if someone happens to accidentally get up on it or stand on it or whatever. And then this is the other side. I'm just getting it welded into place. And then with my flap disc, I want to just cut those welds down so they're nice and flat. So the sheet metal will fit nice and smooth and nice and flat on the top of this. And then you can see, you'll see here in a minute, this is, I'm going to flip it around once I knew it fit well. And right, you can see the overhang right there, about an inch and a quarter on both sides. And that is going to represent the, uh, the handle if he needs to grab it and move it, uh, remove it, uh, you'll be able to grab the sides. That's what he was looking for something smooth he did not want any handles visible it just wanted a nice uh, smooth cover all right now that i got that all welded down there's one more little touch and that is the front plate that's going to be going on the front right there and that's going to finish it off and that's uh, how it's going to hold itself in place on that stem wall and I had this lip right here uh, where it come together and I, I didn't really like that. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and, and weld this all the way across and I'll just take a flap disc and I'll clean up the weld and round that corner. Um, otherwise, water would probably get down inside there, possibly call, cause erosion or, or whatever, even though it's going to be powder coated. But still, I didn't want to see that. So I thought this would be a nice finishing touch. Uh, go ahead and grind this down. Now I'm changing over the flap disc right here. There's nothing really wrong with that one at that point. There's still lots of life left in it, but I chose to put a brand new fresh one on here. There's a lot of grinding that's gonna happen and I just didn't wanna uh, spend too much time uh, with that other wheel. A nice fresh wheel like this removes a lot of metal really fast and that's what, uh, that's what happened right here. Still plenty of life left in that wheel though. I'm gonna be using that for a while. All right, so there it is, uh, the finished product right there. You can see I got the uh, lip on the side, and this is how she's going to be able to move it off. You can see that I'm slightly struggling a little bit with this thing. It is heavy. I don't know, 50 pounds, maybe 60 pounds. Um, but uh, there it is, pretty heavy duty. I think anybody can stand on this thing, and it's not going to go anywhere. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. I think the customer is going to be happy as well. All right, we're going to get this over to the powder coater and then uh, we'll get it installed. All right, there it is. It looks really good, worked really well. Customer is really happy. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.